at this time that you would make your way to your seats and we would ask that everyone but the family would stand at this time if all but the family would stand at this time Jesus said to her resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he die yet shall he live and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die do you believe this for I know that my Redeemer lives and at the last he shall stand upon the earth and after my skin has been destroyed thus shall my flesh through it I shall see God who I shall see on my side, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. For we brought nothing into this world. And when we depart, we'll take nothing from it.
Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Amen, amen. Although this is a time of sadness, our hearts are heavy. This is also a time to celebrate. Amen. So come on and celebrate. Come on, come on. We come to celebrate. Celebrate a life. Celebrate. Celebrate a brother. Amen. Celebrate a father. Celebrate an uncle. Celebrate a husband. We come to celebrate a life well lived. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 And we're going to um, ask if you're able to, our choir will lead us in our hymn this morning, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. That's going to bring us some comfort this morning. Because when all else fails, we know that Jesus is mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. assurance. Amen and amen. Amen. And I'm going to ask that everyone except the family, now everyone except the family, stand for the prayer. Amen. Amen. Come on and stand for the prayer. Because the prayer brings us together. Let us pray. Sovereign and almighty God, the keeper of our soul, comforter, lover. Heavenly Father, we come on this day. Lord God, I ask right now that you bring comfort to the family, Lord God, during this moment in time, Lord God, during this hour, Lord God, you know all about their needs, Lord God. You know as they bid a farewell to their loved one, Lord God, meet them at their point of need today. 
Lord God, we ask that you just comfort them and wrap them in your loving arms. Lord God, we need you right now. In the midnight hour, when they're sitting in their quiet place, speak to their heart. Lord God, we thank you for the life, Lord God. We thank you for how you blessed them thus far. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that you just touch them. Touch the immediate family. Touch the extended family. Touch all the family and friends, Lord. We thank you that the sanctuary is full, Lord God. We thank you that those that are joining us in the virtual space, Lord God, we thank you for the life, Lord God, of this here, our brother. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, saturate the family, Lord. You said that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And even in this time, Lord God, to be absent, Lord God, <laughs> we know that to be absent in the body, Lord God, is to be present in you, Lord God. And we rejoice, Lord God, knowing that he's looking down on us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, even in this moment, Lord God. Bless, Lord God. And we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And as it's Jesus' precious name, we say amen, amen, and amen. Come on and say amen with me one more time. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, our Old Testament is coming from Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. The New Testament, 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Ha, hear the words. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Ha, I have kept the faith. Amen? Amen. The word says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen. That is a good word on this day. Amen. Now we're going to have a solo. Amen. By Brother Ev Evans. Amen. Good morning. Two, one. We got sound. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm an extended family member. Uh, I attend church with uh, Pastor Ishmael and Tanya and his um, mom and sister. So I just came to try to encourage you guys today. Uh, we could never, ever, ever be ready for when a loved one has passed on. But um, after losing my brother a couple of years ago, I made it my business to encourage the people who remain. Amen. I'm gonna do this without music, but thank you so much. Amen. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out and you're watching us now. Even when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in. Every need we have you supply. You've got this in control, and now we know that you, you made a way. Oh, 
when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're standing here only because you made a way standing here mm -hmm. not knowing how we'll get through this test but holding on to faith you know best Every need we have you supplied. You got this in control. And now we know that you, you made a way. Yeah. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you, oh Lord, you made a way. Yeah. And we're standing here only because you made, cause you move mountains and you cause walls to form with your power. Perform miracles And there is nothing, yeah That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains, yeah And you cause walls to fall With your power Lord, perform miracles, and there is nothing yeah that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made, and we're worshiping here only because you made, and we're living here. Only because you made a way. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and let's give God a hand praise. How many know God has made a way? How many know we're standing, we're here today only because God has made a way. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Evans, for blessing us. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Only, only because God has made a way. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for reminding us. Only because. Only because. Only because we're standing here because God has made a way. How many know that God has made a way? How many know? It could have been another way, but because God has made a way. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have the um, reading of the obituary followed by a poem. Amen. ask that you take the podium. Good morning, everyone. William Nathaniel Cooper, also known as Butch and or Coop, was born December 9th, 1940 in Washington, D.C. He is the son of Roy Faust and Marie Little. He grew up in Georgetown Heights Court. Later, his family moved to 1312 B Street, Northeast, but it was 824 I Street, Northeast, where he spent most, most of his life. He was the third oldest of four siblings who preceded him in death. He graduated from Phelps Senior High School. He worked for many years as a driver for creative printing in Bladensburg, Maryland. Later in life, he went back to school for TV repair at Armstrong Technical School. In addition to repairing TVs, he also worked on washing machines, dryers, air conditioners, and almost anything with a motor. 
He joined and attended Brown Memorial Church for many years. He sang in the choir and even drove the church bus to pick up seniors. Butch married his first wife, Eartha Cooper, in 1964. They had two children together, Dennis and Tonga Cooper. He also raised Earl Davis, Eartha's first child. In 1976, Butch met his current wife, Bobby Cooper. In 1983, they brought twins into the world, Paul and Paula Callahan. He also raised Yvonne Tompkins, Bobby's first child. Butch's favorite football team was the Washington Commanders. He enjoyed watching the game and being around family. Butch was very family oriented. He played a major role in everything his kids, grandkids, great grandkids did, activities, school, camps, and et cetera. Butch was always laughing. He had a smile so bright that it would light up the room. And as soon as he walked in, he was such a comedian. Butch was the last of his siblings to get called home. He leaves behind his wife, Bobby Cooper, his kids, Dennis Cooper, Tonga Cooper, Lakeisha Williams, Paula Callahan, Paul Callahan, and Yvonne Tompkins. He also leaves behind his grandchildren, Tonisha Tompkins, Alexa Cooper, Khalees Williams, Ronika Grant, Ronald Grant, Mache Callahan, Deja Mills, Sanai Cooper, Kai Cooper, Davon Mills, Paul Callahan, Dario Tompkins, Dakota Tompkins, Mason Callahan, Denim Scales, Karan, Kamari, Kyren, Kamiko, and Gaddafi Williams. Thank you. I know I can't read it to you or give it to you, but we, we, love, we love and miss you. And all the memories we made, I hope we can make it again. They say there's a reason. They say, well, they say time will heal, need the time or reason. We'll change the way I feel. Gone will gone are the days we used to share. But in my heart, you always these. I mean, in my heart, you always three. The gates of memories will never close. I miss you more than anybody knows. Love and miss you every day till we meet again, always or ever. Rest in peace, Gordon Butch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grandpa. G is for gentle and gruff. Once you said it, that was enough. R, real and rough. You, granddad, was the definition of tough. A is for always lead the family in prayer. When the church, the church doors open, no doubt you'll be there. N is for never wrong, always right. To your hard-headed grandkids, you was the light. D is for dashing and dear. You're always there to lend a hand, even the ear. P is for peaceful and kind. Loving your family was the first on your mind. A is for and Maria Angel. We love so true. Even up today, we we'll deeply miss you. Amen. Come on and let's encourage their heart. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you for 
those poems right from your heart. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 We know that this is a, a time of reflection and a time that you come back and give from your own spirit back to your loved ones. And we appreciate it. And we are here to support you. A letter to my grandfather. A letter to my grandfather. <laughs> Dear Granddad, I miss you more than words can explain. You know, I always told you that I never like to speak in front of a crowd or public speaking because it always makes me nervous. <laughs> but I am here today to do this for you because I can see you now pushing me and reminding me that everything will be okay. <laughs> All I have to do is take my time and breathe. <laughs> With that being said, Granddad, I never wanted you to leave me. I wake up every day wishing that this was a dream, but it's not. It makes me so sad to know that I can never see your face again, or your smile, or hear your laugh, or your voice. It was always a joy to be around you. I thank you for everything you've done for me, from being at every sporting event I ever had, to being at every school ceremony. You were always there, no matter what. Even the days you were busy at the storage, you would leave everything outside and come straight to me. I thank you for pushing me to try things that I've always been scared to do. I thank you for believing in me, Granddad, even when I didn't believe in myself. You were always super supportive of me. And I most of all thank you for loving me unconditionally. You told me everything that I needed to know in life. The only thing you left out was how to live without you. <laughs> At times I feel lost and I would just cry and ask you to help me get through this. I ask God to wrap his loving arms around you and give you a lot of love because you truly deserve it. Until we meet again, granddad, I love you. Amen. And our prayer is that God wraps his arms around you all, family, during this time to let you know that, you're, that he loves you and that although your grandfather is not physically here with you, to remember that he loves you and that he wants the best for you and all those precious memories, that he's right here and you carry him in your heart and that when you're feeling sad, you look at those videos and you see those smiles, I saw all that love and joy in those videos, and that you remember that your grandfather wants you to continue to move forward and to do well and to be well and to do great things. And to, he's left a legacy that he wants to be proud of. And as you do well, he will continue to be proud, amen? Amen. That's how you can show the love. That's what he was deposited into you while he was here on earth. And you can continue to show that for him. Amen. Amen. Now we have a selection um, by our Brown Memorial um, praise team. Amen. <laughs>
Shall buffet go trials, trials they come. Let this, let this blessed assurance control that Christ, Christ, He has regard. it was too short but God said my son it's time to come on home you finished your work down here it is well it's well it's well with his soul and I know today and yesterday and even some of the days to come 
it's difficult. But just know, just remember that song. If you can't remember any other verses, it is well, it's well, it's well, it's well with his soul. Amen, amen, and amen. And now we'll have reflections, amen. And if you have been asked to do reflections by the family, we ask that you be mindful um, and respectful of the two minutes that they have asked you to do. Amen. If you have been asked to do reflections, we ask that you take your position over here at the um, podium. Amen. If anyone truly knows me, they know how much I love my daddy. They know that I'm a daddy's girl. I will always and forever be a daddy's girl. My daddy meant so much to me. I can speak about my father for days. I can write a book about my father. I would always try to think of things when birthdays came, Christmas, to try to give him something just to let him know how much I appreciated everything he did for me. Nothing I would come up with would seem big enough. Daddy, I want you to know that I love you. You will always, always be in my heart. Even though you're gone physically, you will live through me. I will be the woman that you taught me to be. Strong, independent, loving, and caring. My daddy's wish when I went to see him was to keep the family together. My father was the glue to our family. Daddy, I want you to know that you left enough glue on us to keep us together. Growing up, you know, me and my brother, we were different in ways. My brother was the hard-headed one. I was the one to never want to disappoint daddy. Paul say, come on, it's the party going. Let's go. And I'm like, no. Daddy's going to get us. Even going to school, we were in the same classes. He wouldn't go to class. The teacher would be like, where's your brother? I don't know, he's not here. <laughs> and I tell him, you know, daddy's gonna come to this school and he's gonna embarrass us. <laughs> like, you know, it was, it was just, it meant so much to me to make my daddy proud. And daddy, I hope that you're proud. I love you. Greetings to the family, greetings to the family that's extended, to the family of Brown Memorial. My wonderful sister is so much an honor to see sisters in the pulpit being able to teach us as we taught and from birth the mothers of civilization. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Being a student a minister. I'm going to try to keep the two minutes. But my soul and my heart is heavy for this family because of this great man. This was my first introduction to God. He invited me over here because of his son was a mentee of mine he said, do you think he'll be okay with coming over to visit? And I said, sure. Wherever God is, that's where I want to be. I thank the family. And I know that you're going to hear songs. You're going to hear words. 
You're going to hear expressions. But only God and time is going to give you the answers to all of your questions. The most sought after question is always why? Why, God? Why would you remove, not take, remove someone that we love so dearly? What is it that you're trying to get me to do and get me to see, God? Remember, you were brought through a process, and you shall be returned through that same process. But God is just beckoning all of us to return back to him. Not about titles, about a proper relationship with God. So when my dear sister called me at 3 o'clock in the morning, I said, God, what would you have me to say to her? I said, God, speak through me for her to offer comfort at this time. And all I can remember is I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even until the end of time. So now we got to begin to trust God in everything that we do. And the sister sung it. It is well with my Lord. See, brother is gone. But now the responsibility is on us now to make a difference in somebody else's life. I thank you, family. I know it's going to be some dark nights. And there are going to be some tears, and there's going to be some frustration and anger, and it's all justified. But remember, weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. All you got to do is hold on and hold out and watch God come out and show up for you because he promised you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if he got you through it yesterday, he'll get you through it today. You just got to be patient and trust him. See, you got to stay in the process so you can see the promise. I don't even teach you. I'm going to close it out. But you know it's kind of hard. <laughs> because I've spoken at many of these, and the one thing I remember that we must continue to do, brother had paid a price, fought the fight, Ran the race. Now we all got something we got to do. Because what will they say about you and I when we stretched out? I just want to hear my good and faithful servant. Job well done. See, it ain't about me no more. It's about somebody else. He lived for us. He didn't live for just himself. So when he took and accepted me as his son, he would always see, say, I'm so proud of you. I, I say, thank you for taking the time out for loving me in such a wretched state. See, we got to start loving more and stop hating. And that love has to start with the way you see yourself because the way you see yourself is not the way God sees you. So remember Brother Cooper for whatever you remember about him. To all of you all, just remember one thing. God didn't bring you this far to let you go, and he didn't raise you up to let you down. Trust the process so you can see the promise. Thank you so much. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Amen. 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 My brother um, is I'm doing a reflection for no more than two minutes. Go ahead, my brother. Amen. Amen. Two minutes. Thank you. God bless you. To the family, Paula, Paul, Miss Annie. My brother, I need you to speak into the microphone. Amen. Sorry, God I'm, bless I'm you. I'm nervous. I never did it before. Never okay. Before. Just speak into the microphone. It's okay. Amen. First of all, I send my love and my condolences. Um, Y'all can hear it in my voice. I'm nervous. Uh, my brother just said, um, for whatever we what, whatever we remember him as, me, the next door neighbor, remember him as my my maintenance man. We never we never we never went without a washer or dryer thanks to him. That's the perks of being his next door neighbor. And even if anybody lived in our alley or just around Kenilworth Prairie, y'all know he coming to fix that for you. And he gonna, he gonna have it done for you. He not tripping about no money. Or nothing. He just wanted y'all to, you know, ha, ha, he just wanted everything to work. 
for the community. That's how I see it. That's how I took it. And uh, I want to say this too. My, I'm still grieving. My grandma just passed uh, on Christmas Eve. So it's still tough for me. Um, all I can think is they, they, they up there rejoicing together. They up there rejoicing together. So to the family again, I love y'all. I love y'all. That's, that's all I can say. I love y'all. Stay strong. Y'all got this. He was a strong man. This is legacy. Like she said, this is legacy and love. So I love y'all. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's all about the neighborhood. It's all about the community. Amen. Do you see the legacy? And this is what Brother Cooper, here on earth, this is what he planted. This is the love that he planted. Amen. The neighborhood. Amen. He wanted everybody to have. Amen. Amen. And so now, amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ralph Green. I, um, Cooper was a, a really good person. You know, he, he was there for me, uh, along with the other um, students at the school where we studied on electronics. And um, he, um, he had more TVs than anybody I ever seen. <laughs> He was helping the school, you know, he was really helping the school out because he would, you know, if they needed a TV set, is that, uh, so I would ask, I said, well, uh, is that a Cooper set? <laughs> He'd bring it on in and, and we'd work on it, so, uh, you know, so it was really a, a joyful time for, um, to really meet Mr. Cooper. Always had a smile, you know, and uh, see, I was with, with Motown, and uh, so I was fixing pianos, but I need to learn electronics. And uh, they were there to help me. You know, they helped me. I, I, more electronics than I ever seen. I mean, um, Cooper was that, that type of person. And I used to see him. His son would come in. The little teeny guy had his uniform on. You know, had his little football uniform on. I said, he played football? He said, yeah, that's, yeah, he played football. I said, uh, I said you, you look like you. Because he was little, you know, had all this uniform and stuff on. And so I said, well, um, well, let me see what you can do. And so that little dude hit me. I respect him. I respect people with the uniform, you know, with the football stuff on. But it was a, it was a great time, and I I learned a lot, really a lot, because you had high voltage section, low voltage section, you had all of this this stuff, and I never got hurt and never got shocked or anything. So I was really glad about that. And so they all the guys were there: Charlie, George. A couple of them sitting in the back. Uh, Ford, everybody was there to help us, you know, and help me. So thank you so much for your father. He was really fantastic. Amen. We have one more amen. I love granddad. <laughs> and that just sums it up, right? I love granddad. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Um, when I first came into this family, it was kind of hard. Because <laughs> I didn't grow up with what. When I was introduced to this family, they showed up to everything. <laughs> Granddad didn't have to say much to me. He just kissed me on the cheek and hugged me. I always wanted to be around him and my cousins. I hope Granddad continue to rest in peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you, family. All the love that you're sharing today here at this microphone and to one another, all the words that you're speaking, I encourage you to activate it and don't let it be just in the moment. 
Continue to outpour love to one another. Continue to encourage one another. Continue to let the legacy shine with one another. Amen. Amen. Come on and celebrate each other. Come on and celebrate each other. Affirm one another. Amen. Life is too short, right? Life is too short. Amen. We never know. And now as we continue on, and thank you for sharing a part of your life with us on today. We are grateful. We are grateful. Amen. Um, and now we're going to ask Sister um, McDowell, um, Janice McDowell, to come and share with the church paper and any acknowledgments that she has, followed by Sister McDowell will have another selection. And after the selection, the next voice you will hear is that of our um, pastor, Pastor um, Marlene, Dr. Marlene. Oh, no? Oh, okay. I said it wrong? Okay. Um, after <laughs> the musical selection, you'll have, we'll have our eulogy by our very own pastor, Reverend Dr. Marlene R. Mitchell. Hear her and be blessed. Amen? Amen. I guess I was saying a mouthful. Amen? But don't leave. Don't leave. Amen. Don't leave. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Brown Memorial AME Church, 130. 14th Street, Northeast Washington, D.C., February 3rd, 2023. Condolence paper for Brother William Nathaniel Cooper. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us to learn to endure, and endurance develops strength of character in us and character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. Ephesians 5, 3 through 5. Our Heavenly Father, in his infinite wisdom, sounded the trumpet, and our dearly beloved brother, William Nathaniel Cooper, answered the call of transition from this earthly realm to his heavenly reward on Saturday, January 21st, 2023. To Sister Bobby Cooper, a loving and devoted wife, Dennis Cooper, Tonga Cooper, Lakeisha Williams, Paula Callahan, Paul Callahan, and Yvonne Tompkins, loving children, loving grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and to the extended family members and friends. The pastor, ministerial staff, officers, and members of Brown Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church have gathered today with heavy hearts to offer the entire family and friends our deepest sympathy at the loss of your loved one. Brother William Cooper will now dwell in the house of the Lord eternally where every day is Sunday, and the Sabbath has no end. We are here today to celebrate the legacy of our dear brother, William Nathaniel Cooper. Brother Cooper joined the Brown Memorial AME Church family under the pastorate of the late Reverend Henry Y. White. Brother Cooper sat attentively to receive the word of God with his family during the Sunday morning worship services. He always entered the sanctuary with a bright, friendly smile. He was a relatively quiet, unassuming individual. 
Brother Cooper took pleasure in driving the church bus for seniors as needed for transportation. He enjoyed singing the praises of God with the men's choir, particularly during the annual men's day services. He was a devout Washington Commanders fan, and he would proudly suit up when he desired to do so. He would come in with his Washington Commanders attire. Brother Cooper would avail himself to work with the men when called upon for various special events. His demeanor was always pleasant and warm. To the family, it is our desire, the Brown Memorial Church family, that you continue to trust in the Lord, your God, and lean not on your own understanding, but through this difficult time, acknowledge the one who can do anything but fail. Our Heavenly Father has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us, and that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Be strong, family, in the Lord and in the power of his might. We encourage you to know that in due time, your wonderful, fun-filled memories will bring you more joy than pain. The Brown Memorial AME Church family will continue to pray your comfort, peace, and strength in the days, weeks, and months to come. We stand ready to serve you with the love of God for whatever the family may stand in need of. We are only a telephone call, text message, or email away. May God bless you and keep you, family, in his perfect peace. In our love, respectfully submitted, Janice B. McDowell, church clerk, Reverend Dr. Marlene R. Mitchell, pastor. Amen. God bless you. to me Just me and you I feel so lost Cause I don't know what to do Now what if I choose The wrong thing to do I'm so afraid Afraid of disappointing you So I need talk to you and ask you for your guidance especially today when my life is so cloudy guide me until I'm sure I'll open up my Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My hopes and my dreams are fading fast. I'm all burnt out. And I'm not sure my strength is going to last. So I'm crying out. Crying out to you, Lord, I know you're the only one who is able to pull me through. So I need to talk to you 
Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, anybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. For God so loved the world. That's all you need to know. You want to open up your heart? Just remember how much God loves you. He loves you with a magnitude that you cannot measure it. You can't fathom it. You can't conceive of it. That's how much God loves you. Sister Bobby, his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, family, friends. Know that we are praying for you. You can't pray for yourself. You can't get the words out. Know that we are here encouraging you, lifting you up. She said to Paul, I was, I was a daddy's girl. I sat in your seat, right in that seat. I'm Kathy's daddy's girl. We know this journey right here. This I do know is that God will always be there. In the midnight hour, you can't call nobody else. God will be there. Always, 
that's his promise that he would never leave us even when you can't feel him because having a relationship with God isn't about what you feel it's just knowing by faith that he's there and I promise you he will see you through I'm not going to tell you it's not going to always hurt a part of you that will always hurt the wound won't be as fresh but it will always hurt because that's always hubby there's always daddy <clears throat> always pop up but you will learn to smile again and you'll bring back all the fond memories you know when you can't bring them back just play that video you ain't even got to go far because long before I saw that video, I saw that video on Facebook. Amen. I knew how much he loved you. And I could see how much you loved him. <clears throat> and I could see how unselfish he was with himself. Everybody can't be like that. He was unselfish with himself with you. And so we praise God for that. And we are praying. In February of 2010, my daughter's father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She was six years old. I knew that disease. I knew how devastating that disease would be on the body. I prayed like I've never prayed before, and God how will I bring this baby through this? How will I explain to her that her daddy won't be here? And for 18 months, I told her the same story every day. That all of us start out with God. That he loves us so and then he decides that he can be away from us for just a little while. And he allows us to come to have family, friends, experience life, share his love. But for all of us, there will come a time where he can no longer bear to be away from us. And he'll decide when that time is and when our work is done. And for a six-year-old, that was enough. I promised her that her daddy would always live on in her heart. The day that the Lord called her father home to be with the Lord, we were out walking the dog. And she looked up at me and she says, Mommy, I don't have to wonder where daddy is. Daddy's right up there, and he's right in here. And family, from the mouth of a seven-year-old, that's what I want you to know. Bobby, he will always be there and right here. Children, always be there looking down on you, but always right here in your heart. Carry him there. Remember him. Talk about him often. Because this right here was a brother who left more than a legacy. He left a witness. And now you share that witness. I believe that he walked around with that smile all the time because he was cognizant that we live in a world of sadness. That we live in a world where people every day are losing hope. That we live in a world where every day there is turmoil. And that smile had a way of bringing joy into any situation. So remember that. Hold on to those memories. Hold on to the love that he shared with you. And know that we're praying. And now your journey begins. 
so that you will see him again if you need us. Bobby, you know how to get me. Just call. Doesn't matter what time. I already told you, I might be cross-eyed, but call me anyway, and I'll be there. Share a word. Some people preach their own eulogy, and I almost feel like it's already been shared, but the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know the way you are going. How can I know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh all over this place, in this space. God, even those that are sharing with us virtually, bless them as well. Holy Spirit, sit down upon this family and comfort them, breathe on them. Walk with them, master, and talk with them. We thank you. Now, God, speak a word of encouragement, hope, and healing into their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, as we gather this morning, now this afternoon, we gather to remember the life of William Nathaniel Cooper. And as we come together, I'm clear that many of us are dealing with mixed emotions. On the one hand, there are emotions of great sadness. Sadness not because he is in a far better place, but sadness because we've lost a loved one, a husband, a father, a grandfather, great grandfather. Sadness that we'll never see that great big old smile again. Sadness that we'll never hear that laugh again. Sadness that there'll be no more jokes on him or you. But on the other hand, there's great joy, family, in knowing that because of the relationship that Brother Cooper had with the Lord, that he's now in the very presence of God. And I don't know about you, but somehow that gives me a sense of joy. Paul gives us this confidence in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. So we are always confident that knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And we are confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present now with the Lord. Brother Cooper is absent from that body. He ain't in there. He's present with the Lord. Love as painful as the loss can be. Today, we celebrate him. You see, because for a Christian, there's no greater joy than to be in the presence of the one who will always love us like nobody. I know y'all loved him. But let me tell you this. You didn't love him as much as God loves him. Hallelujah to Jesus. So today is not simply a day of mourning, but a day of celebration. It's not a day of regret, but truly a day to celebrate, rejoice. We come to remember his life and to reminisce. Long after we say the benediction today, we come to reminisce over all of the special moments that we have shared with him. See, whether you knew it or not, Brother Cooper, wow, he might have been a jokester. Wow, he might have liked to get his party on. <laughs> wow, he made the unfortunate choice 
to follow the burgundy and gold. Now, you have to understand, we had an understanding. He and Bobby sat Ray back there. They would come up in here in their burgundy and gold. I ain't forgot, Bobby. But it was love. He had a personal relationship with the Lord. He has run his race. And our journey continues. And the reason it's well with his soul is because there were some promises that God made to him that he was able to hold on to. And I want this family to be able to hold on to the same promises so that one day you will see him again. And we find those promises in the scripture that I just read in John the 14th chapter. The very first of those promises is that none of us has to fear death. Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. In other words, chill. That's what the word says. See, we are troubled when we don't know what is going to happen when we die. But Jesus has taken the fear out of dying. He has conquered the grave and death, so there needs to be no fear in our eternal future. Jesus said, don't be afraid. I got you. Don't be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. I am he who lives and I am he who was dead, but I am he who got up and lives forevermore. I love it. Do you know what the good news is this morning? <laughs> the good news is that death had no hold on Brother Cooper and it will have no hold on us because Christ conquered death and there is no fear for those of us who call ourselves Christians. For the believer, there is no fear for the one who puts their trust in God because through our relationship with God, we understand that Christ on the cross conquered death. And not only are we troubled at the thought of not knowing what happens at the point of death, we are troubled when the view, when we view death as an end instead of a beginning. Just on yesterday, we celebrated the life of another member of Brown Memorial. And the family, just like this family, they too had a beautiful presentation. And at the end of that slide presentation was a picture of our sister. Arms stretched out as she was soaking up the sun on the beach and the caption read, my journey has just begun. The Bible declares, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. Family, I want you to know, I want you to know that Brother Williams, Butch, Coop, Hubby, Pops, Pop, Pop, whatever you knew him as, I want you to know that his life is not over. In fact, it has just begun. Man, y'all think he like to party down here? Man, y'all don't know the party that he's having right now. Lord have mercy. Uh, he, he, he has shed the temporary for the eternal, the tarnished for the spotless, and the passing for the everlasting. Yes, our earthly bodies die. Every last one of us got to come this way. But our heavenly bodies will endure for all of eternity. So not only do we face death without fear, we can also rep, rep, rest in the promise that Brother Cooper had that Jesus himself has prepared a place for each one of us. I want you to know that Brother Cooper has gone to a place where the Bible declares, Sister Bobby, that there's no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. No more pain, for the former things have passed away. 
He is gone where the Bible says the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. He's gone to the place where there's no more sickness, no more doctors, no more hospitals. And he is in the very place where every day is Sunday and the Sabbath shall have no end. Oh, but there is yet another promise that we take great joy in. And that is that when God calls one of his children home, he personally receives us. What I've come to know about Brother Cooper is that he was a hands-on kind of man. If he said he was going to be there, then it was he who showed up. He sent somebody else in his stead. And that's the very model that God gives us. Can you just go with me for just a few moments? Just use your sanctified imagination. If you don't have one, imagine that you have one. I, I, I can just imagine that the moment that Coop took his first breath, in heaven, that God himself, that the master, the shepherd, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords, I can imagine that he was right there to welcome him in to the kingdom. I can imagine that he walked right up to him, dapped him up and said, man, where my house? No, no, no. He said, man, where my mansion? He didn't have to worry about fixing no washing machines. Good God almighty. He didn't have to worry about no technology. He was going to a mansion that God himself had prepared for him. And when he entered in, Jesus was right there, arms wide open to receive him into that great mansion that he had prepared for him. But there's one more promise, and then I'm going to let you go that Brother Cooper was able to fully realize for himself on the morning of January 21st. And that promise is that there is only one way to enter into heaven. Jesus said, Thomas, you know, you don't know the way but to heaven, but you do. I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Believe Brother Cooper knew for his own self that without a relationship with the Savior, there was no hope in heaven. He understood that Christ came to take away the sins of the whole world and that included his as well. Simply put, he believed in the greatest promise given to all of us found in three simple verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Love it as I take my clothes. Brother Cooper has run his race. He fought a good fight. He fought a good fight of faith. And now, now he has received the crown of righteousness that was laid up for him. So now it's up to the rest of us. I don't know about you, but one day I want to see him again. But this I do know that the only way for me to get there and see him is to have a relationship with the same Jesus that he believed in. And to live a life in such a way that at the end of our journey, the Lord will say to each one of us, just as he said to Brother Cooper, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Look around this room. He's been faithful over a few things. Anybody experience his love while he was here? He, he did what God called him to do. He, he, he did what he, he was faithful unto what God called him to do. And so he's run his race, and now it's up to us. 
And the only way you're going to see him again is to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, I know we're at a home going. But what I know is that none of us know the day nor the hour. Not even sure Brother Cooper knew that January the 21st was going to be the day that the Lord would require his soul. He could walk out of here today. And God had decided that the number of our days had been completed. If you want to see him again, you got to be in relationship with the Lord. And I believe that's what he would have me to say to you. Get your life right. Get right with the Lord. Some of you, he already told you that more than once. Get right with Jesus. You know you out here struggling. You tried everything you're big and bad enough to try. And Brother Cooper said, just try Jesus. Just, just try Jesus. Just try Jesus. So I'm just going to ask you where you are. If you would just close your eyes and bow your head. Came here today, came here because Brother Cooper had blessed you, loved you, you loved him back, wanted to share your condolences with the family, but just maybe <clears throat> somebody came here today and you don't know the Lord. You've never entered into a relationship. Matter of fact, nobody ever gave you the opportunity. Right now is your opportunity. I'm not asking you to leave here perfect. I'm just asking you to search your soul, make a decision to trust Jesus. I'm not asking you to even understand it all, just asking you to trust Jesus. If I'm speaking to you and you know you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I don't want you to worry about your neighbor on your right or your left. <clears throat> Because this I do know, when we come to the end of the road, we come by ourselves. So don't worry about who's sitting next to you. This is a personal decision. Brother Cooper made a personal decision to try Jesus. If that is you, I just want you to stand where you are. I'm not going to ask you to walk. I'm going to pray with you right where you are. If that's you and you just want to give Jesus a try. You've been thinking about it, wondering about it. If that's you. Just stand where you are. Hallelujah. I'll wait for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we honor you and we worship you. We give you glory, O oh God, for William Nathaniel Cooper. Thank you, God, for his journey. Thank you, God, for the time you allowed us to share. Now, thank you, God, that we don't have to wonder where he is, but we know he's resting in your bosom, oh God. So continue to comfort this family. In the days to come, dear God, walk with them and talk with them. Breathe upon them, Holy Spirit, oh God. Put people in their path that will be a blessing unto them, oh God. God, we know that the void seems ginormous right now, but, oh, God, we know the void they feel is not too big for the Holy Spirit to fill. So, God, come into their hearts and fill the void. Flood their memories, oh, God, with all of the wonderful time that they shared with Brother Cooper. But, oh, God, in those memories, let them be reminded that Brother Cooper had a relationship with you, and if they want to see him again, all they got to do is connect with you. God, we thank you. Now bless them indeed. We thank you. God, we ask a special blessing of Sister Bobby. Mend her broken heart, God. Comfort her, God. Breathe, Holy Spirit, upon her. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I'm going to ask the funeral directors will come now. As they are coming, I'm going to ask if those who have been assigned as pallbearers would come. We need uh, some sisters who will come, sisters or brothers who will come and carry the flowers. Family, know we're praying for you. We're always here for you.